If you enjoy Our Sinclair and want to support the show, please visit our page at patreon.com slash Our Sinclair. Hi everybody, welcome to Our Sinclair. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to be talking about Popeye, the sailor man. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about your first experience with Popeye. Easy. I was a young Aaron back in the Dizzy, and I used to watch a lot of uh, cartoons, Boat. I know this is a stunning revelation. And Popeye cartoons were amongst my favorite young Aaron cartoons. Now, there are several different flavors of your Popeye cartoons. You got your uh, Max Fleischer, like old, old cartoons. Yeah. And then you've got sort of the. Uh, the uh, I guess it'd be the '60s or, uh, yeah. or or late '50s '60s version. Those are the ones I like. Mm. Then when you get past that, you get these more modern ones. Screw all you that. Get the young Popeye. No, teen I, Popeye. Get all that out. It's a lot like the Flintstones. If they're not the classic episodes, then screw them. I'm not interested because then they get real stupid. All right. I like the Popeye of that do, '60s. Do you era. prefer Bluto or Brutus? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And it's funny, there's a, there's a legal reason why that they changed it. It's real convoluted and weird. Do you know the story? I don't. It's so convoluted I can't remember, but I did read up on it. Yes, I read up on Popeye. Uh, and In fact, I read some stuff about him today. But I love Popeye. He, I, thought it was, I thought it was amusing. It had tons and tons of good, wholesome violence. Popeye whacking dudes and making it like a pinball machine. Mm -hmm. Popeye flying around by his pipe. <laughs> it had uh, crazy characters. You had Wimpy, right? Mm -hmm. Can you? How many pop? Did you watch Popeye? Oh show? yeah, yeah. So then none of these are unusual. You got pop, You got Wimpy, right? Yep. You know what's his saying? Can you remember his saying? I'll trade you a hamburger today Wrong. for a tomorrow Tuesday. No. I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. That's what I said. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's conning people. You got olive oil, mm -hmm. right? You got Bluto slash Brutus. You got Poop Deck Pappy. I'm not familiar That's Popeye's 99-year-old uh, dad, hmm. Poop Deck Pappy. I think that was a later. That then was you had, no, Popeye. no, no. He's been around forever. Wasn't that Robin Williams? You had the one. goons. You had Alice the goon. Or is she the witch? No, That no, was the sea that hag. That was the sea right? hag. Then you had Sweet Pea. Mm -hmm. That's the baby. Yeah. Where, were the, where did the baby come from? Is the baby the Popeye's The baby was, a, was child? a child that was just delivered to Popeye to take care of. Oh. Yeah, that's... The, and now all of them often will be pictured with, but I mean, that way in the car in the car in the comic books, he just showed up at the door. One of the and this used to happen all the time apparently in the twenties, because Popeye's been around since like nineteen twenty nine, I believe right. it was. And then you got the Jeep. Remember the Jeep? The Jeep is Eugene, the, the, the dog, magical right? Jeep. It's not a dog. He's a Jeep. He's he got a long like a straight dog. tail. He's got yeah. a he, he's he's magical. Okay. And so uh, that's where they got Jeeps. The name for Jeeps came from him. They also uh, Wimpy. They named an airplane after Wimpy. Because really? Wimpy's, yeah, so these are popular. Did you know there's a hamburger chain in the UK called Wimpy's? I've heard that, yeah. Which is, that's pretty cool. And uh, I was reading today that the Popeye comic strip was so popular that during World War II, where Mussolini banned all American literature from the from coming to Italy, the people rose up and demanded, <laughs> and they got it over, that they, they brought back Popeye. They would not live without Popeye. <laughs> That's how popular he was. Wow. The original Donkey Kong was supposed to be a Popeye game uh, that they could not secure the rights to, mm -hmm. so Nintendo put out Donkey Kong, and then they put out Popeye afterwards, which is a, yeah. a, a great game. And, and, you know, interesting trivia that I'm sure you know. Um, soon after they put that out, Nintendo lost the rights, you know, that they'd acquired from King Feature Syndicate, yeah. and they've never made an attempt to reacquire them, which is why Popeye has never been re reissued. It is a shame. Then. It is a shame that, uh, because that's a great game, and... and uh, Popeye as a character has diminished in popularity, I, I would say. You know, but you know, people still sort of know who he was. He got his own pinball machine, mm -hmm. uh, and there was a, one of the later released pinball machines. Wasn't like that wasn't that 90s. based on the Robin Williams movie? No, it was not. But he did get that wacky film. Have mm -hmm. you ever seen that movie? When I was small, it scared me. It scared me too, but not for the same reasons it scared you. I was more appalled. I will say, Shelley Duvall was a perfect. Uh, not Shelley Duvall. Uh, who was it that played Olive Oil? It was the same girl that was in The Shining. Help me out, somebody. Anyway, she was the perfect chick to play. Actually, they got the casting down pretty well in that. I, 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 I thought they did a good job. Um, Charles M. Schultz was quoted as saying, Papa was the perfect comic strip, and he would know a few things. It's funny. I, I don't think that I've ever read a Popeye comic strip. I only know him from the cartoons. How many comic strips have you read Period that were in the, like the paper. Did you were you a Tons. paper guy? I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not putting you down. Yeah, but, but I, mean, I don't know you where to realize. Fell. I mean. 
Ziggy, you know the, the, the classics. Ziggy, Garfield, your family circus, right. um, and Peanuts. See, when I grew up, some of the old stuff that was, was still in there. So Popeye, Red Every Day, uh, he was in there. Uh, Dagwood, Blondie, yeah. Blondie. No, she, I, she I was read in that there, stuff, but I never you know. saw Popeye. Yeah, I Popeye was in there, man. Uh, uh, he was in there with Prince Valiant. Did you ever? Wa- did you ever read any of those serial strips? To me, that was just the biggest waste of paper, like Prince Valiant or the 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 Phantom. Well, Spider Man had one, but I mean, they're so short, you can't yeah. get a lot out of them. Yeah. You know, uh, now when they put them, when they collected them in a book or something. I mean, but you got to think Popeye. I think I read that his his strip ran from twenty nine. Now, he, he debuted in 29, but he was just a character as part of another thing. But he got popular, and he sort of basically took over the strip. Mm-hmm. And he ran from, like, effectively, he started in 29, and he ran, they ran a, a, a weekly comic or a daily into, like, the 70s, I think wow. it was. And then event, then it went to weekends, a weekend Popeye at that point. Uh, but, I mean, that's a long time to run. And most people know about the gimmick with the spinach and mm-hmm. stuff. I mean... Where would pop, where would spinach the industry of spinach be without Popeye? They'd sure. be screwed. No one would be eating that disgusting stuff. Yeah, I am, you know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he's a cool character. He's been the series of plenty of uh, games and and who and is the stuff. creator of Popeye? It's funny you should mention that. I've got his name right here because I didn't know it either. Uh, so he, the, he was. Created. It is Shelley Duvall, according. Okay, to Okay, great. I, I thought I, I had a moment of of, of questioning that I should have known. The the creator was a person named Elsie. Chrysler Cigar, right? It was a gentleman that drew him, and one of the cigars, S E G A R, one of his trademarks, he would, instead of signing it, his strip, he'd put a little cigar picture in there. Oh. You know, it's his gimmick, you know, pretty good. I like it. But yeah, so think about that, though. Uh, cigar died in 38. Wow. And he, Papa was already, and when he died, they said Papa was so popular, he was already making $100,000 a year. Boy. And that's in the 30s. That's crazy. So, that's so crazy. And that was before Papa really got the animated stuff kicked off, you know. King Syndicate, which I believe, didn't you say you won a trivia contest earlier? I did. I was getting ready to mention that. I knew it. I knew it was going to come up. Every time we talk about Popeye, I've got to mention that at Classic Gaming Expo 2003 in Las Vegas, I won the Jeopardy competition with the final answer being Popeye. Very and, good. And I won the Ark the Lad collection for the PlayStation 2. Snap, you still have it? No. In fact, I traded it before I even left the show because I was like, I'm in a retro gaming show. What do I want this PS2 game? So I, I, I traded it for a Famiclone. You made the right decision, yeah. which you now don't have. Right. I, I, got, I, I, I sold that immediately. Stuff, it's all gone. Yeah. But anyway, Papa, a long and illustrious career in strips, movies, TV, He's, uh, and a very popular character now again. And you never know. They're gonna, there's a, there, I'm a, waiting for Popeye the musical. Well, get this. It's been in the works for a while, but they're in the works with an animated Popeye film. It's going to be like computer animated, mm-hmm. like Toy CG, Story. Yeah. It's, been, it's been in the works for a while. Uh, and I believe it's uh, 2008. In 2018, they were talking about finding director and stuff for it. So it'll probably get something. And Papa, they're going to always bring back that nostalgic stuff. So oh, I, yeah. you know, so people can introduce their kids to it. My kid likes Popeye. And my favorite thing about the old cartoons is that Popeye, all, it's the real old ones, the old ones before I really got into it, mm-hmm. I don't like them as much. But one thing I like is Papa and him continuously complains. He's right. always under his breath. He's always grumbling. Oh, I'll tell you something. Right? Yeah. I, nonstop. And I thought to myself, I'd love to see the voice actor who just sits on this mic and just perpetually complains <laughs> and makes noise for like a, a five-minute short. You know, it'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, that is that is interesting. Um, I did want to mention a quick piece of feedback from last week, Aaron. Last week you mentioned the game Car Wars. Yeah, man, yeah. And... Um, Eric Nelson actually wrote in, and he said that uh, he actually owns Car Wars. Yep, I've got a copy of it myself. Um, and uh, and then somebody replied to him, saying that they own the whole collection Ooh. of uh, of those games, which those were Steve Jackson games. Yeah, if you know him. Uh, oh, here we go. It was it was Foz Tex. Oh man, uh, has now, the entire collection. Now, hold There's that Illuminati up. Now, down okay, there. now Illuminati is my is my game. All right, I'm the king. I'm the crown prince of Illuminati. Mm, never not been not that collectible crap. I'm talking the old school car, Illuminati. Now, Ogre, I used to own that. And I, I've never owned that Car Wars, but I own the, the book version of it. But Steve Jackson games amongst his biggest claim to fame is probably he was the guy that had GURPS, the generic universal role-playing system, which GURPS is very popular and still is pretty popular. And also, Steve Jackson, with a few guys can say he's... His uh, shop got raided by the FBI. Mm. <laughs> so why? Why? Uh, it's a long Illuminati. story. It, yeah, well, sort of. Yeah, it's a long story. Mm. It, that's a whole crazy I story. Re- I reckon that he's made more money off Munchkin than anything he's I, ever done. I believe he passed on, but I'd mm. say you're probably right. Yeah. 
Somebody can stop me if he's not, and if not, I, I like him. So anyway, sorry for that detour, Aaron. That's okay. Let's keep talking Popeye. So <laughs> let's talk about Popeye. Now, I mentioned that Nintendo released a, tr- a tremendous Popeye game. Uh, one of the premier NES games, a great arcade game. And so when this was announced as Popeye for the Spectrum, I was like, oh boy. Because I've been playing a lot of Popeye on the Coco. Uh-huh. As you know, I love that yeah. the Sailor Man, mm-hmm. which is a ripoff. And so I, I loaded this up. And when it came up, I was like, what in God's name is this? Well, then I remembered I had seen photos of this. Really? And so I, you'd, you'd actually come had, into contact somehow with well, this Well, yeah. And I remember thinking, man, that's what in that? What is that? You know, crazy thing. And so that crazy thing's our game this week, Popeye. <laughs> so uh, this came out uh, for the Specky in 85 uh, boat. Now, I did this just for fun. This was developed by an outfit called DKtronics, which is basically, uh, uh, from what I could tell, it looked like it was the designer's like outfit. I mean, they may have done other stuff. The designer of this was Don Priestley, which I'll get to him in a minute. But I looked at some of the stuff they had done. They <laughs> they did Senta Bug. They did Galactians. Galactians. <laughs> I'm sensing a theme here. They did Jaws. They did Munch Man. And my personal favorite, Trom. <laughs> Trom. <laughs> Was the, I did a bunch you can of even stuff. stylize that in the right font. Yeah. And just change Although it doesn't ladder. look anything like Tron, so oh. I was disappointed. And the funny thing is, they did Centibug, but they also did Centipede. So I don't know what happened. Maybe there's maybe, maybe someone it was saw like, maybe it was like Miss Pac-Man, where they hired the guys that they did the clone to do the real thing. I love it. I love that. Now let's talk about the fellow that put this thing d- together. His name is Don Priestley. He's pretty famous uh, for a couple of his games. Now. The game that he is super famous for is a game called uh, Through the Trap Door or Trap Door. Lots of people on Discord now, talking about Trap Door. Right. Now, I have yeah. never played it. Me neither. I've never seen it. I know it was like, was it featured on a show? Or did I have a show or something about it? There's something going on with the Trap Door, and I'm sure we'll get to it. Mm-hmm. I didn't, And I didn't want to spoil it, so right. I didn't look into it. But the thing that I found interesting, and amongst his titles that he worked on, he did work on a lot, were, and, and they developed a ton of games. I just named a few. He did, he, did, uh, he worked on Spawn of Evil, City Patrol, Sabotage, Flunky, my personal favorite, <laughs> but my favorite of all these. And it, it lines up with this game perfectly. He did the Benny Hill Madcap Chase game. Now, you oh, know I'm a big Benny yeah, Hill fan. Yeah. And so I had read that this game shared a lot in common with the Benny Hill game. So I looked, and it, they look very similar. The Benny Hill game has got the big sprites and stuff. So one of these days, if we ever play the Benny Hill game, that'll be fun. And the Benny Hill game looks like one of those games where you steal stuff and then people chase him around. Mm-hmm. That's the way it should be. And also, if you have the, I believe you have the 128K spec. You know, someone may have just doctored it in, but there was a pretty rousing version of uh, Benny Hill's the theme, song. Yeah, you Yackety, know, Sax. Yackety Sax. So that was, that was good. But anyway, <clears throat> so getting back to this game, uh, this had released, uh, this, pop, this version of Pop, I had releases on the... Uh, uh, Amstrad and the C64 uh, as well. This was a 48k uh, specy game, and this originally retailed uh, according to World of Spectrum for six pound 95p, and then budgeted for about three pound. Uh, so the usual, the usual sort of title on these. Um, I didn't look at these on the Amstrad or the C64, but I'm wagering they're probably pretty similar. I would think uh, so, g- uh, given it, given uh, what this one looks like. So. What in God's name am I looking at here? What is this Popeye game? Because it's going to take some explanation in the boat. It is. Now, you had not played this or seen it, right? So, this is from the back of the cassette. I'm going to go to this because this gives you a good idea. Hey, I can't help it. it, it. So, life's not all a bowl of spinach for Popeye as he hunts for hearts to win the love of olive oil. His rival, the macho Brutus, is not amused. He thumps around making pulp at Popeye. Olive oil demands a never-ending supply of love. That's my favorite line. Get that on a shirt. Olive oil demands a never-ending supply of love. Keep her sweet by collecting 25 scattered hearts and handing them over. Take care to check Olive's love-o-meter. When her love level starts to fade, you must restore it by delivering some of your hearts that you have collected. So that is the game. Yeah. You've got to run around this uh, uh, multi-screened... Uh, uh, Area play field world and world that's better and collect these hearts now uh, that sounds sort of like the arcade game mm-hmm. I can tell you right now this if you're not watching this or you haven't played this this is zero like the game it's just, I mean in terms of play mechanics yeah, yeah. Um, but you pop well up. I mean you are gathering hearts right but I'm arcade. talking the actual play mechanics totally different so the first thing you're gonna see is a giant 
giant screen full of stuff. You've got Popeye, a big, huge, well... I mean, the graphics on this are easily the best we've seen on the Spectrum, bar none. It, they might be some of the best graphics I've ever seen on an 8-bit computer. It was, and there's, the color clash is gone. There's yeah. none. How the yeah. heck did they do this? No idea. No so idea. Popeye looks like Popeye. Yeah. He's got his forearms are huge. He's got mm -hmm. tattoos. He's got his hat and his pipe. Mm -hmm. And he even looks dumb. Yeah. When he stands there, he just makes dumb faces like an it's idiot. Just like the cartoon. Like Popeye yeah. did. That's what made Popeye great. He's right. a big fool. Uh, uh, Brutus uh, lumbers around like a, a big mean jerk. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the sea hag. She flies through occasionally. You've got her vulture. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if the vulture had a name or her buzzard, whatever that thing was. I don't remember if it had a name or mm -hmm. not, but he's in it. Again, much like the, uh, the video game uh, that Nintendo put out. All these characters are in there. Uh, but Popeye, his big, huge, sprited butt, walks around, and you try to collect these hearts on these various screens. Um... What makes this game, amongst the things that make it unique, of course, the fact that they're, you're looking at, like we're looking at this plate right now, Popeye, the sprite of Popeye is a solid over a third of the screen Yeah. in terms of height. He's huge. All the sprites are huge. Um, so you you lumber your guys around this, uh, this world and try to collect these hearts. Now, what makes this game really bizarre is that you are, there is depth to it, okay? So you may be on a screen where you can go through a doorway and you'll go up a ladder, for example, or upstairs. And if a bad guy touches you in this, they knock you down. So if they go past you when you're on an, like another plane, they just go right by. Mm -hmm. That is the crux of the game that makes it difficult to understand until you play a lot. And even then, it's very, very difficult. Even then, it's a little iffy sometimes, the, yes. the, the collision. Um, the uh, Yes, that's true. In fact, you'll be certain that you didn't die and then you die or get hurt. So Popeye has a, uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, you've got a an inventory uh, of slots. I believe you've got eight slots. And in these slots, you can you can put uh, keys, you can put spinaches, and you can put hearts, mm -hmm. okay? Unlike the Nintendo version of Popeye, where you take a spinach, you just go around beating a tar out of uh, a Bluto, and this... Basically, spinach is get Popeye up. They wake him up. Right. If you run out of spinach and you get thumped, you're done. It's game, game over. Game over. So they're almost like your, your men or whatever. Uh, keys just do what you think they do. They open doors. And hearts are the love that you've got to supply olive oil, her never-ending need for her love. <laughs> olive oil is the ultimate needy date. Like, she needs you to, or, and which is I, somehow apropos for the cartoon because she's like that in the cartoon, too. Mm -hmm. But she always is the center of attention all the time. This mm -hmm. little string bean of a woman. So what you've got to do is you've got to gather these hearts. The hearts aren't just out where you can grab them right away. You've got to go work for them. That means you've got to scale stuff. Mm -hmm. You've got to unlock doors to get to them. You've got to ride This is really stuff. the crackdown two of the specky. <laughs> How do you figure? Well, you know, do you ever play crackdown? I don't, I think so, yeah. Okay, well you've got to gather the orbs that are placed in all the different crazy places in the world. I don't remember. I don't remember it. Okay. But I mean, I believe it's, I mean, it's like, it's, it ain't like Bruce Lee. No. Like, where you just, the stuff just hanging no, out. No. You've got to go get these things and they're not easy to get. So uh, Popeye can get these things and he, he he's okay. He can fall. Nothing hurts him until something touches him. If right. something touches him, it's his butt. Now, let's talk about your enemies. We mentioned some. You've got your, you've got Bluto walking around or Brutus and he just lumbers around. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll get back to him. Then you've also got the vulture. Then you've got the sea hag. Then you've also got a, a sleeping dragon, mm -hmm. which I don't remember that from the comic, but maybe it was in there. I don't maybe know. Maybe he was in a special episode. Yeah. So and he'll he'll light you up, mm -hmm. and and that's a whole. I'll get to him. So you've got a aside from your inventory, you've got this love -a meter on the side. This tells you how much olive oil loves you. Okay. You don't want this thing to get down to nothing or your bone. So you've got to. What you've got to do is once you gather some hearts, you've got to come back to where olive's at. Her, her uh, torso sticking out her, I guess, her house window. Mm -hmm. And you've got to give, you, when you go up to her and push towards her, you'll give her love. Right. Now, it's not graphic, but I mean, no. you give her some love. I don't know what that means. Well, Maybe you're have, you seen, have you seen the end of the game? I have. <laughs> Uh, but uh, this is the preliminary. It gets real blue. This is the, the preliminary. End. Yeah. To, so this is the preliminary love. Maybe he's giving her a smooch, or I don't know what. But then you've got to go out and get more love because she's an insatiable love needing beast. Mm -hmm. So all these characters that you come across are on a certain plane, and they can't leave that plane. Right. The only one that can is is Brutus, 
who can actually move into another plane of Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, he can. Mm. Now, if you're like me, that didn't come into play too much because I didn't have any trouble getting killed by him on a normal plane. (laughs) Uh, I found this game um, difficult to the point of pushing me past being frustrated. I I would get angry. I get upset. I, uh, the fact that you can't fight back was irritating. I would love to have popped someone in the face. Yeah, yeah. That's that's probably the biggest shortcoming of this game is that you as Popeye, the ultimate fighting machine, has no offensive capability. <laughs> yeah. Popeye is quite a puss in this, actually. Mm-hmm. Anything hit kills him. And if you're unlucky, uh, for example, there's a sleeping dragon in this scene. If you get too close to him, he'll fire you. Mm-hmm. And if you've got a spinach, you'll get back up. And then the second you get back up, he'll fire you again and say you're dead. Unless you have more spinach. There's a couple places where you'll just be killed and if you'll just get instantly get killed again. Like, also, if you're just unlucky enough to have one of the bad guys come lumbering through after you just took your spinach, you're dead again. So, having uh, an extra spinach on hand does not necessarily mean you're going to be okay to get killed once. You can just get killed a lot. Yeah. And that was frustrating. Uh, the game is slow as molasses. I mean, yeah. one thing about having guys this big is that they are mega slow. Yeah, yeah. That is the to me that is the unforgivable aspect of this game. I can live with everything else that the game throws at me or does right or does wrong, but the way that you as Popeye plod along the world is just it's unbearably slow. I mean, thankfully, everything else is slow, too. Right. Otherwise, you'd be screwed, but it um, doesn't make it more fun. After I after I sort of got my fill of playing this, I went on to YouTube and, and was watching the playthrough, because one thing about this game is that I did want to see everything that the game had. Every yeah. single screen is sort of varied enough that you're like, oh, that's kind of neat, especially when you consider the limitations of a 48K Spectrum. Yeah. Um, and what I found is that running this game at two times the normal speed on YouTube I was gonna mention that. made it perfect. If they could have just figured out how to make the game run that fast, man, it would have been great. Spectrum next. Yeah. We need yeah. a t- turbo button. Um, I agree. It's so slow that it's unbelievable. Uh, and it, that really, and that's not what makes the game difficult. It just makes the game tedious because once you die and start a new game, you know it's going to take you forever to get all the crap back. You've got to retrace all of your steps again. Now, if you're a patient lad in 1985 and this comes down to your house and you're like, holy crap, look at this, Mm -hmm. you're going to have the patience that an old jerk like me doesn't have Mm -hmm. because I'm old and I don't want to wait forever to get Popeye lumbering around. On top of that, this game requires, for, for a game this slow, it requires a pretty good amount of timing. And paying attention. This isn't. A, uh, this is certainly not a platformer. This no. is. I don't know what a, a strategic adventure game where you have to time everything with the with where villains are because you can't actually hurt anyone. Right. And so you've got to. We've got to. You've got to run a lot. You've got to be strategic in where you go. Mm-hmm. There were some areas that I watched in the walkthrough that I don't know how I could have ever figured out how to get to them. Yeah. They looked really Just hard. Just tons and tons of trial and error. How many hearts did you end up getting before you tapped out on this? Oh, I can't remember. I mean, I, I got around enough to where, like, the in the next building over from this screen, I went down by the ship and stuff like that. But I really wasn't exactly sure how the hearts impacted the uh, the love meter. I didn't figure that out until I, as I was watching the, the the playthrough, I was able to sort of glean more about the game. Yeah, if you don't if you don't keep the love meter going, you'll you lose. Mm-hmm. That's, that's all there is to it. So you, you get killed. There's a part of this where you'll go underwater. There's a pi- there's like a pirate ship you go on. There, there's a UFO. The the wackiest thing is the the slot machine. That is why I didn't actually get to that, but I saw it in the yeah. playthrough. Where you have to basically get the uh, get one of the hearts out of the slot machine. Now I'll tell you what's cool is that um, when you climb to the top of the lighthouse in this game, there is an enemy that's flying around it. Yeah. And the way that they 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 graphically represent the the passing of the enemy in and out of the plane and the way that they draw the lighthouse is very ingenious. This game was sort of ahead of its time, or uh, uh, maybe it was a little bit ahead of what the specy could graphically do. It would make sense to a viewer because mm-hmm. this is a game you really have to play this in a in a weird mindset because the depth is unseeable. I mean, it really is. I mean, you'll look like you'll be certain you're going to get killed and a guy will walk right past you. That's because they just had to be on, on another on another level than you and you went and there's and it's not always you're not always sure what level which way you can go. Right. You know. Now, I'll tell you, this 
you know, I can't say enough how good this game looks. I mean, if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast and you don't know what Popeye for the Spectrum looks like, look it up because it's unbelievable how good the sprites look. And if I would have had this for the Atari, I probably would have played a lot of it because I would have I would have realized that okay, you don't have any offensive weapons, so it's not necessarily a reflex based game. Everything that you can figure out, like you said, it's like a puzzle adventure game sort of. Um, I think that with a map and with enough time, you know, if you draw out where everything is, you could you could figure out the puzzles. And I think uh, there's there's some replayability here, even if you did have the answers, you know. Uh, uh, but I mean, because because you have to get the timing right and stuff. Mm-hmm. All that said, uh, this is not a game I will probably go back and play. I found it so slow and frustrating that I was like, you know, I just don't think I want to get into it that much. As much as I like Popeye, and as much as I'm impressed. The fact that this doesn't have any color clash, I like I said, I would like somebody to explain how that works because I mean, these are huge sprites we're right. looking at here. Maybe it's just a lack of stuff. Maybe that's something to do with the frame rate. Who knows what it is? But I mean, it is impressive. And if you were to take this game and stick it on a box, you know, and oh, people would, man. I mean, I bet they saw a ton of these strictly on what what the graphics look like. I would have hoped that they would put the this on the front of the tape. I would just have a picture of Popeye yeah, in the game and put actual game. You could footage. put actual size. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. You could put it up to your TV. Like this is exactly what it looks like. Mm-hmm. Popeye is well drawn. All the guys are well drawn. Mm-hmm. They look like they're supposed to look, and they uh, like Popeye walks around like an idiot. And he's got an idle animation. Yeah. he sits there and makes faces at you when you're. I mentioned that Benny Hill, the same fellow that did Benny Hill game, I watched that one. And Benny Hill uh, runs a lot faster than this one. And Benny has a run animation that it's it's like he's it's, if you ever watch the end of his shows where they have the crazy chase and Benny runs around like an idiot. He runs sort of like they look like, almost like a bizarre rockette. Mm. He was running around and it looks pretty funny but I noticed that that game runs a lot faster than this one. So I'm wondering if maybe it but either the had less. But the sprites are just as big. Yeah, they're mm. just as big. I'm wondering if they had less going on. If it was, a, if, I don't know which came out first. To be mm-hmm. honest with you, uh, so I, I I don't know if this. I have. A, I think this was the first game like this that this fella did. Maybe Benny Hill came out second, but Benny Hill looked a lot uh, a lot quicker. So uh, that'll be that'll be one to look at somewhere down the line. Uh, but overall, you know, I, I, this is a nice technical achievement, and I'm sure at the time it was a lot of fun. But it's not one that I personally. Yeah. We'll be uh, heading heading back. Heading I back admire it because, it, like you said, it's beautiful and it's different. Uh, it, yeah, it, it's yeah. definitely different. Now, uh, I looked up some reviews on this one, uh, Boatster. Uh, the people over at World of Spectrum, they're a generous bunch, as you know. They gave this an 8.12, which is a pretty good score. Uh, I looked at Crash, and they gave this an 80%. Uh, they they were confused by it. That's one of the reasons they, had, they decided that they had trouble with it. Uh, and they mentioned that the graphics were good, but they wish they'd been a little bit smaller so they could have seen more of the, of the world, the screens. I can understand that. Um, Sinclair user thought he was really slow, you know. Well, he, and so they, he that, wasn't wrong. Yeah, well, I know. You're, you're not wrong. And, uh, and, and so that, that was something they held against it. They, they weren't real super fond of it. Uh, did you get? Did we get anything on the uh, Discord? We on did. One? Uh, Graham, Holy moly! Graham, we got yeah, we got quite a few reviews <laughs> on this one. Uh, Graham W. Vebke says everything about this game is big, big colorful sprites, big backgrounds, big slowdown, and big amounts of cheap shots. It's a multi-screen adventure game where you collect hearts and need to avoid being attacked by witches, dragons, monsters, and of course, Bluto. Says it's pretty neat for its time of release to have perspective of entering buildings, opening doors, and climbing up and down ropes. Locked doors were annoying, too, as you needed yeah. to trace back to find keys somewhere. And again, I got bashed by Bluto far too often and never had enough health. While I wasn't a big fan of the cartoon, it's an okay game. Five out of ten. Yeah, there's a lot of backtracking in this in there, but... Yeah, you know. yeah. Uh, Retro Enzo writes, In the day, I was a massive fan of the game Trapdoor, yeah. as well as Flunky. <laughs> Although I wasn't very good at Flunky. I'm, I'm very good at Flunky. <laughs> That's bad when you're no good at Flunky. <laughs> I completed Trapdoor over and over again, and it didn't lose any of its charm. Popeye is one of Don's Priestley's first games with the big colorful sprites and charming characters. Popeye's gurning face is brilliantly reproduced, along with capturing blue dough and olive oil to a T. I should love it. But it's insanely difficult. Maybe I didn't get that far, but I thought Popeye's spinach eating gave him superpowers and didn't just revive him from being knocked out. It's impossible to work out where you are compared to Bluto or the bird, and I got randomly knocked out or killed by them too many times. 
Even following a walkthrough from the tipshop.co.uk, I found it insanely difficult and probably not one I'm going to return to again anytime soon. Two out of ten. Ouch. Chris Fold says the graphics on this for the machine are amazing. The sound is what you kind of expect, and all <laughs> yes. the components are of what could be a decent gamer there. But the slowdown, the layers don't quite work, and it's crazy hard. So glad he made Trapdoor and fixed all the faults with this system, but this ain't great. Four out of ten. So I guess Trapdoor came. We later. gotta play this Trapdoor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Spence QLZX says. I didn't have time to play it. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Played it earlier, got into it. Runs a bit faster than the RSX or the RZX version of the Super Gold card, but the collision detection turned a few more hairs on my head gray. Five out of ten. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I did look this up on eBay, and as usual with the uh, specy stuff, uh, you can get this uh, all day long uh, between two and seven U.S. dollars. So cheapy, cheapy, cheapy. Yeah. Uh, Arc Arkeezer. Arc, oh, Arc Leisure, he makes a great comparison. He says it's basically a colorful game and watch title. I mean, that's what it plays like. It plays like a game and watch title, don't you think? The speed of it. It yes, it does yeah. play like it does play like uh, uh, a game and watch. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of crazy, uh, it, almost frame by frame action like you would expect in one of those. So yeah, I can see the comparison. We did have one more review. Sorry, I didn't scroll up far enough on the old Discord. Let me make sure I. Guys, we got to keep this channel clear on here. All right. No more reviews except for Pixels. A visually impressive game with a fun concept and huge cartoony sprites that are easily recognizable. Unfortunately, this is where the appeal ends. <laughs> the sound is bad even for the Spectrum, and the gameplay is the very definition of plotting, making dodging enemies unpredictable. Popeye is oddly weak and relies on a layer system to avoid enemies, and yet it is basically impossible to tell what layer any character is on. I often got knocked down cheaply on screen transitions. Yes. Could have been so much better with a simpler, quicker graphics, but as it is, close to unplayable. You know the screen... Three out of ten. When you die, and the screen fills with a little Popeye logo, yep. that sounds hideous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that makes you never want to die that again. That sound is... It is it's, a good, it's very good at making you want to stay alive. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Aaron, I just want to remind everybody that might be listening that uh, you can find the show on YouTube if you're listening to the uh, audio version, or if you're watching us on YouTube, you can subscribe to Our Sinclair on any of your favorite podcatchers. Uh, make sure you check out our other shows. Uh, we've got Amigos, which is all about the Amiga, and uh, we've got coming very soon, our first episode probably going to be next week, the Coco Show, all about the TRS-80 color computer by Radio Shack. Mm. So um, lots of lots of things. And hey. ARG Presents. I would never just forget. Kicking that, just brushing that one to the side. I would never it? forget ARG oh, Presents. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a winner. Um, <laughs> what a ringing endorsement. Just trails <laughs> off. It's a winner. <laughs> it's special and it's I own. like it. Um. We did get we got two new Spectrum supporters. Oh this boy, week, Aaron! Um, we got Jeff Owen. Jeff spelled cool guy style like G off. Oh yeah, like I love they that. do over That's there. That's the best one. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Uh, Andrew Waite also became a supporter. Welcome, welcome, and a new Clive's Club member, the one and only David Spencer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Welcome aboard, guys, everybody. Thanks for joining up. We appreciate it. And we want to thank all of our Spectrum supporters out there that support the show on Patreon. Andrew Waite, Jeff Owen, David Spencer, Cap'n Crispy, Laurent Giroux, Gary Heather, Eric Nelson, Harbo Knot, Graham Vebke, Frodo NL, Tapes from the Crypt, Pixels at Dawn, doing a great job moderating the YouTube chat, Chris Folds, Boss Man Harrington, and Christopher Hassel. Thank I'm you guys so much for Thank supporting you. our Sinclair. Um, next week, Aaron, we're going to play another classic. All right, another one, huh? Just like Popeye. No, this one, this, this, <laughs> this one's... this one Donkey Kong? This one's a legitimate classic. <laughs> All right. A legitimate classic. Next week, we're going to play Chucky Egg. Okay. Outstanding. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that because I had a cup of tea with that one back in the day, so that'll be fun. Yeah. Until then, rewind tape and press play.